Hey guys, welcome to Brawl Street to Britain with me, Dave Shaw at UK Phillies. Finally, the off season is over, the talking is done, and we are on the eve for ourselves of the new season ahead of us. And it's that time of year again. It is prediction time, and I'm joined by two UK Philly fans with me as well, Ryan and Patrick. First of all, Ryan, how are you, buddy? I'm good. You're like, it's that time of year again, prediction time. I'm thinking, no, man, it's opening day for everyone else. Just, just we got rained out. Uh, I know, I know, I know. I'm, I'm kind of jealous. The baseball's going on. Everyone's getting excited, posting big Mike Trout home run plays. I'm like, oh, come on. No, but it is. It's kind of nice that uh, Friday is sort of got a bit more baseball, actually, because you normally get this like big oomph, don't you? Of like, oh, it's right. opening day. And then the next day, there's like no baseball. I don't know why they do that. So tomorrow, that has been saved by the Phillies. Exactly. And I think that's the whole point of the off day between opening day and then the Saturday and Sunday is for any chance of rainouts on the opening day. So, so that's why. Good Friday is good Friday. Let's, let's go. Bank holiday, baby. And it's the Phils be the Braves, Wheeler versus Strider. And I am joined by Patrick as well. Patrick, how are you, buddy? Hello. Well, I'm a mixture of excited for the season and disappointed not to be at Passion for today because that was going to be that was going to be pretty epic. Um, the Phillies, like I think it was booked for, out, sold out, full of Phillies fans in London, which is a shame, but. You know, we've got it tomorrow now, and that means we don't have to have that, like, you know, that one game teasing us and then a long wait until Saturday. But, look, we've waited 60, you know, how many days? Too long. Much more than that, in fact. You know, we can do an extra one. We're, we're patient. Exactly. And hey to everyone watching, either on X or on YouTube as well. Get your comments in. What are you guys doing for opening day? Let us know your predictions as well as we go along all the predictions, because that's what today is. It's the prediction show, the big Billy's prediction. I want some bold predictions. I want some, let's go crazy, crazy predictions. I've already put it out on social media, and if you have replied, I will get your predictions read out as well. But say hi, get involved. It's a fans show at the end of the day. We want to hear what you guys have got to say as well. So either on X or on YouTube as well. So come say hi, get your predictions in, and let's have some fun with this. Let, let's let's dive into it. First of all, I, I want to hear from you two, Ryan and Patrick. Do you have any traditions on opening day? Is there any rituals you have? I know some fans love to do the same thing on opening day. Uh, any traditions you guys have? Patrick, with yourself, I know we're going to be at Passyunk. It was packed out. And they're showing the Yankees game on the big screen instead. Ah. Oh. Man, uh, unfortunately, we can't be there. I'll be there Sunday myself. But Patrick, what is your plans for uh, for opening day? Uh, well, I've got um, I've got a game of seven aside that I'm playing tomorrow. Um, and so hopefully, the, the most important thing is um, a good omen would be not injuring myself yep. uh, and bringing that fortune because that's something that would be very nice to get through the season healthy uh as we saw last season when harper came back that was a big boost uh and also i've got tr baseball training on saturday so getting in like your team patrick there. did you play yeah. for uh the, the london, london mets, mets. Uh, not, not the first team obviously yeah, but you playing. know I'm, I'm, I'm getting i'm i'll i'll be there one day probably not but um yeah i don't think they'd be very impressed if uh on the first training session of the season i got myself injured playing footy so yeah and ryan i think leeds are playing tomorrow as well so you've got a double double bubble tomorrow <laughs> yeah yeah i don't, I don't know I, I like watching the phillies i, I, I that'll be less stressful because it's 162 games right and i'm pretty confident that <laughs> over 162 games will, will be okay uh <laughs> the leads game might just send me over the edge as we get closer to the end of the season but no i'm looking forward to tomorrow man i'm not i did one one year i went to pnc park um and i didn't go to the opening day uh game uh, but I went to game two and game three of the opening series at PNC Park. And, and that was pretty cool. Uh, Jim Tomey was uh, playing. The Phillies weren't very good at the time. Jim Tomey had sort of come back for his sort of when he was getting on a bit and was yeah. playing for us. So I've, I've done it live a couple of times. I've been in Philly one opening weekend. But generally, it's just at home and like just have some 
food that feels a little sort of like naughty. Like I had like <laughs> hot dog buns tonight with ketchup and like there's no nutritional value to it. So that's like perfect. Good man. Good man. Yeah, this time last year, I was out there for the uh, for the opener watching Hoskins and Harper raise the 2022 pennant flag. Uh, that was cool. Um, yeah, it's it, it's special being there. I, I recommend it to anybody who's either watching in the UK or, or America or wherever, getting out for opening opening day. It's special. You know, you've got the paratroopers coming in, the players walking across Broad Street, coming through Ashburn Alley, down onto the field, and everything that goes with it. It's it's special. It really is worth doing if you can ever get the chance to do it. I'm kind of kind of bummed I'm not there again this year. Now I'm thinking about it, but. I'm going to be there uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Ryan, you're going to be in, in Philly as well. Uh, but I think you're yeah. there for WrestleMania, right? Uh, the crazy thing is I've, I'm, I'm, I've somehow avoided baseball games, which is, is sort of sacrilege, really. But um, It is. Yeah, I've sort of, um, I'm out there for a fantasy baseball auction that I'm doing about an hour outside of Philly um, a weekend after this. And then I'm going to WrestleMania on the Sunday. But I think the Phillies are down in Washington. They are. They are. And I just don't have much time. I can't stay too long, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, I've uh, unfortunately, yeah. Kick me off the show now, basically. Right. See you later, Ryan. Nice, <laughs> nice talk to you. <laughs> no, I'll be flying the flag. Of course, I'm flying out to Philly on Monday with Liam, another UK Phillies fan. We're actually flying at the same time. However, I'm going by a Dublin uh, which is a slightly cheaper option, and I get to do clearance in Dublin, so hopefully it avoids the annual drama going through customs in, in Philly, which is uh, just forever a traumatic experience. I'm not concerned, Dave, because I don't need to go to the Phillies. The Phillies are coming to me. Okay? Well, what, a, what a segue, Ryan. That was, that was perfect. Yes. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> We are, of course, this is such a big year and a special year for, for everybody at this side of the pond because the Phillies are coming to London. We cannot wait. We're what we're just we're just over two months away. What nine, ten weeks? How quickly this has come by as well. Uh if you are if you do see me in Philly, come grab your uh your special London series cards. Or if you're coming to Patch Young, or if you're coming to London series, if you're in Philly, Washington next week, I've got hundreds of these cards i'll get these out to you and also i'll be getting these out and about around mcgillan's uh hopefully around citizens bank park and other areas of philly um it's basically your ticket code for if you are coming to london series for your links for all the london events so much happening cannot wait and we've got uh what tomorrow we've got a special 10 percent off discount of some of the events at london series tomorrow on the passion avenue website look out for the discount code uh, we've got some competitions coming tomorrow for opening day as well. A lot of exciting stuff coming because finally we are at opening day. And let's just start with our predictions for the opening series. First of all, the Braves, Wheeler versus Strider, Nola going on the Saturday. And then what, Suarez versus Sale on the Sunday. Patrick, how are we feeling? How are we feeling? Optimism's high, obviously. <laughs> you know, I'm, I, everyone knows I'm a glass half full guy. I'm, I'm up here right now. I am buzzing for the opening series. I think we're going to sweep them. Um, but Patrick, what, what do you reckon? How do you see this weekend going? Well, I've heard the phrase cautious optimism saying a lot. I always want the opposite. Like you want to be realistic, but you want to be cautiously realistic. You know, yeah, the Braves, you know, whisper it if you want. Say, say you hate to say it. They're a very good team um uh but we know how to beat the braves and citizens bank park will be you know they'll be up for it because we like to beat the braves um we don't like them they don't like us and that just has a really good atmosphere um look something we want to do is not just spend the whole season like 15 games behind them we want to go for the national league east maybe we don't win the national league east and the main thing comes in the postseason but um, I think we need, if we want to, you know, stay on track with them, and you'd imagine that even if we fail, you know, staying with the Braves and fighting them for that top spot would guarantee you a place in the postseason, then a good start is necessary. We got off to a pretty bad start last season, and we were chasing the Braves the entire season. So, yeah, I think we need to get off to yeah. a good start. Um 
show, show that we can play them, uh, which we know we can, and just keep those, you know, that positive energy going, the good vibes, whatever you want to call it. Um, so whether it's a, you know, whether if we do sweep them, brilliant. But as long as we pick up, you know, taking the series, I think, would be a very good return. Absolutely. Set the tone. We've got to set the tone. The, the, the first month, as I yeah, tweeted yeah. earlier on, is, is on paper, it's soft. Like, I really would hope we're at least six games above 500 going into going into may where it does get a little bit tougher then uh ryan and and guys watching get your opinions in greg's already in there he's saying sweep let's go for the weekend uh ryan how are you feeling ahead of the uh the big series coming up this weekend yeah pretty intrigued you know i'm uh, if you got wheeler going in uh in the in your game you're, you're feeling pretty good about it i mean i know i know he'll be going up against strider but You'd imagine that game will be pretty close, and uh, yeah, uh, who knows what sort of a Cunha we'll see. And, and he's he may well be fully fit. He might not be fully fit. He's had his, his issues over spring, so we'll see. Um, but I'm not too worried. I, I think I said earlier it's 162 games, and you are a glass half full. Uh, Patrick's obviously very positive as well. I'm sort of a bit more dour, but I'm of the opinion just don't get swept. Is basically the way I view it. Don't don't get swept. If you win one of those three games in the opening series against probably one of the top three teams in baseball, or they have been for the last few years yeah. in the regular season, you've done all right, and you just move on. And as you say, your schedule looks pretty good moving through the end of April and May, and away we go. I think we'll be fine. Uh, of course, yeah. I hope we sweep them. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just want to say we need to avoid some of the, you know, the funny, funky mistakes that we had last season. If we lose because they're better than us, then fine. But if we lose because we're, you know, we're giving, we're giving away, you know, making errors, not making the right play, not making smart decisions on the bases, that's when it irritates me. That's you know, true. that's true. Um, and I think that's something that needs to be cut, cut out just a bit from last season because. Yeah, a brilliant team, but there's also a part where, you know, as I say, losing a game because you're playing two brilliant teams and one comes up better on the day, fine. Losing a game because we just make, you know, we just have a bit of flaws in our game. You can't be you can't be flawed against yeah. the Braves. You have to be Ten, flawless. Yeah, I, I respect what you're saying, but they are the reason they usually win fifteen more games than the Phillies is because they are fundamentally better at those things the phillies are built by the gm to have loads of power and to be offensive juggernaut and to be ready for the playoffs and to have enough to get there but in that we have defensive frailties on and they're the small parts of the game that you're referring to they can frustrate over the 162 game season but then they can be the same things that get you off your seat when you're in the playoffs and you win unexpectedly, Absolutely. right? <laughs> I, I think defensively, we're in a great place. I think we've got numerous gold glove contenders in that. I think, I think our infield I I is, is, is great. And it's going to really help the likes of Wheeler and Suarez as well, who are, who are rely on the ground balls. Our infield should be sucking up every ground ball in there. You know, it is stop gold glove candidate has to be. Bryce Harper's probably going to be the best first baseman defensively we've had. It, I can't even, certainly in my time, but I, I know no, Howard was a fantastic hitter, but defensively he wasn't mighty like Bryce Harper. Potentially Bryce could be one of the best first basemen defensive we've ever had. Alec Bohm just seems to keep excelling and thriving in the third base defensively. Rojas, Pache combo. March isn't a bad defender either, but Pache, Ro, Rojas no, out there in the, hoovering up everything in the outfield. Cassie's not terrible. Maybe the weakest link in in defensive terms, but still not a bad bad defender. Average defensively, and what a contrast to the Phillies of just a few years ago as well in such a short space of time. It's it's look. It, I'm really confident, and I think it's going to really help the likes of Wheeler and, and Suarez especially as well. Um, let's get into some predictions. Let's do this. And number one, I've got here, uh, Roy. Who, who, start with the Brave series, obviously. I'll start with you, Ryan. Who's going to hit the first Phillies home run this weekend? Where's it coming, Ryan? Who's getting it? Well, it'll be uh, Schwarber uh, for first pitch. 
Are you, are you going for it? Are you going Schwarber first? I can see it. I can see it, buddy. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. Kyle Schwarber, he, he'll probably hit the most home runs on the Phillies this season. And he's hitting <laughs> first in the lineup. So it's not a bad bet for me to place, is it? Like, if he's going to be the home run leader and he's hitting first, that's where my money is. <laughs> I I like I like it and I can I can really see it happening. Um, Patrick, where, where do you see the who's hitting the first Phillies home Phillies home run this season? Yeah, to be honest, Shaw was the highest probability, but I'm gonna say someone else because that's no fun. <laughs> I'm not uh, fun. You'll get used what, to that, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about Nick Castellanos? I mean, he's got the pop. He's got the power. I mean, it, it, obviously, you know, there's not really much science behind it. You know, it's based on who you like. Hopefully, it's Nick. Do you know what? I don't care who it is. Hopefully, they all get I, one. I, I would agree. I, 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 they all get one. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the Phillies blowing out the Braves again, one against Schrader? Um, I, I, I'd love one in the first inning from anybody. I'm, I'm going with my boy, Alec Bohm. I think Bohm's going gonna, gonna, gonna to yeah. set the tone. Bohm to set the tone. Well, I hope. I hope the first home runs off Strider. That would be a good start. There's no guarantee give of that it, at all. Give it to me. Well, <laughs> give it. They, give they'll it attack to me him now. though. I mean, he, he's so good. But the the Philly, you might as well. They'll swing. That they, they, you know, they, they'll have a go. Schwarber, he'll be up there you hacking. To get your predictions in as well. I can see them popping up on here as well, either on YouTube or on or on X right now. Get your predictions in. First Philly home run. Where's it going? Where's it coming from? So. Ryan's gone Schwarber. Patrick's uh, going oh, Cassiano. I like Cassiano shout. Love to see it. I'm going with my boy Bohm. Uh The second one over. Uh, no, how many players? How many Phillies players in the All Star? How how many are we thinking, Patrick? How many are we thinking here? Uh, I'll hmm, I'll go with four. I think that's a good number. I mean, we had two last season. Uh, obviously, I think that. Um, I can see I can see Harper getting in now that he's not injured. Um, I also think, and I was going to get on to this later, I think we're due a bit of a, I know he didn't play badly last season, but a bit of a comeback season for JT Realmuto. That's what I'm, that's what I'm hoping for. Um, I, I could see Trey Turner getting in there as well. And then you could say pitchers. You could even say two pitchers. I think Wheeler and Alvarado would have a good, sh good shot at it. But uh, again, it's, it's one of those things, the All-Star game. It's it's a bit tricky to predict, but I've, I've upped it. I'll go Ooh. five. Oh, I like it. Let's go. Ryan, what are you saying? Uh, yeah, well, probably three. I you know, <laughs> All-Star all game is like, I tend to just relax during that. because yeah, It's good fun to get the Phillies there and vote for them. But then when the game's on, I'm just like, oh. Get me the real season back. Like I'm just waiting for Phillies baseball, really. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's a bit of fun, isn't it? But yeah, I agree with what you've just said about uh, JTR, though. I, I really do. You know, people just seem to, I mean, I'm a fantasy baseball player, so, you know, I sort of delve into the stats, but people seem to think that he's just had a, a down season and stuff. And I think, well, Christ, if that was a down season, I, I'm looking forward to this season because it wasn't awful. Yeah. Like <laughs> it wasn't right. no, like it wasn't. I, I, I agree with you. I, I think he'll have a bounce back season if that's even what we're calling it. Because I don't think last year was that bad either. <laughs> but that's just how high, that's just how high his exactly. standards is. Uh, standards are, you know, you have a player that plays at you know a a very decent major league level. I mean, how many baseball players never play in the major leagues? You've got someone that's you know that that makes him by default one of the top 30 catchers in baseball and he's and he's better than that uh and yeah it's considered a down season to be still one of the 15 20 best catchers in the world yeah. so he's, uh, the way he calls the game defensively i still think he's at the very top i think the one frustrating yeah. thing about jt is the double plays in big situations you know that that was the one frustrating thing mm -hmm. but I agree. I've, you know, JT, but I think JT plays nearly every day. He's one of the few catchers. In fact, maybe one of the, the only catcher that plays and, and, and has more innings than anybody else at the bat, at, at bats than anybody else. So he, his workload is high. And with that, you're going to get, you're going to get a little bit of regression throughout the season, ups and downs, but I'm with you. I think JT is going probably definitely 20 plus home runs, pushing on 80 RBIs. And again, you, what you get with him at the behind, you know, catching, calling the games defensively, he's great. 
He's he's one he, again. He's that's why he's the best catcher in baseball, not just for what he brings to the plate, but behind as well. Um, I'm going. What am I going? I'm going free to be safe. I think Wheelers gets in. I think Bryce, if he stays healthy, gets in. Do you know what? Outside bowl prediction, I think Bryson Stott gets in. I think Bryson Stott is going to have a very high average by that point. Defensively, solid. I think he's in for a... I think Bryson Stott's in for a... Not a breakout year, because I think he's already broken out, but a, re, a year where he really takes that next step and really goes on. And I'm going to say... And I wouldn't be surprised if JT gets in as well. Um, in fact, Turner. <laughs> Trey Turner could easily get in. And, uh, and why yeah, why not Cassie? was a good year. Why not Why not Alvarado? Uh, Kirkering, if he comes back firing like he... You know, they've already said... I think Topper said today, Kirkering's firing 98 in the warm-up game yesterday in the minors. Oof. You know, he's, he's just about ready. He's going to have a few more days rest. He'll be off the IL before we know it. I think April the 5th, he's due to return. We could have, it's not inconceivable, we could have five, but I'm going to play it safe and go three. Although now I'm talking about it, I think Turner may make it as well. I'm going, all right, I'll go four. I'll go in between you both. I'm going, I'm going four. Harper, Wheeler, Turner. And yeah, hell, why not? Bryson Stott as well. Stoddy's going to be in there. Um, All right, over and unders. And guys, uh, oh, we've got one here. Five players in from Matty. Matty reckons five players in. I'd love it. Well, when was the last time the Phillies had uh, had five players in? Corey it has JT as his pick. I think that was for the first home run. So, guys, keep getting your comments in. 2-1 says Matt, win over the Braves. Guys, that's great. Keep them coming in. It's a fan show. We want your feedback as well. Get involved with the show. Join in the conversation. Um, over and under. Casty, I think it was 104, 105 RBIs last year. So, I'm going to go 100.5 over and under RBIs. Ryan, what do you reckon? Uh, under just uh, somewhere around ninety-five would be what I'd say. Uh, and that's just me being a statsy sort of. That that's a lot. A hundred plus is a lot. He had a really, really good season. So just, I still think he'll have a good season. But I'm just trying to be realistic. <laughs> <laughs> Pat Patrick, what do you reckon, buddy? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with under. By the way, the last time we had five All-Stars was 2011. So uh, people in the chat can guess who the five were. But um, yeah, 100 runs batted in. I mean, that is that is a lot. Like, But as I said, um, as he said, it, it, uh, if he gets 95, you know, you take that. But it's, it's, if you just miss, that's fine. If he gets over, that's really, really good. I agree. Um, but yeah, I think I think we we, we can, you know, uh, not expect too much and be pleasantly surprised when it does happen. I agree. I, I think over 100 is a bonus. I, I agree. I, I we, 95 would be great. 95 will be a great season. Um 105 last year was fantastic, you know, and, and he's still true in his critics. And I, I still think there's more to come from Casty, actually. You know, he got 104, 105 RBIs last year, and you, and you still felt, oh, he's not he's not quite at where his peak, he's not quite where we know he can be all the time consistently. So, yeah, I'm going for that 95 for Casty. I think 100 plus would, would be a real bonus. Uh, and a little bit more Casty power as well would be great as well. A couple more home runs than last year. I think he got what, 20, he was in his 20s, what, 25? 24, 25. Um, Daniel Harry's going um, 107 RBIs for Cassidy. Well, that that's fantastic. That was, yeah, <laughs> give it to I mean, me now. A, there's a that bit of luck. I mean, if it depends when you hit your home runs, basically. I mean, if you hit your home runs when people are on base, your RBIs are up. If you hit your home run, <laughs> so I mean, True. he's in a good lineup spot in that sense. Like, he's got some great players ahead of him. And so, yeah, he, he could do it again. Let's go to Trey Turner. Stolen bases. Now, 30 last year, he racked up a lot of them. Didn't get caught stealing once except in the postseason uh, where he racked up tons of stolen bases. It seemed to come alive. I think he started off a bit cautiously last year. Of course, he had that dip until August. Then he really got going. Oh, I think there's going to be a lot more stolen bases this year. I'm going over and under on the 40.5 for Trey Turner. Uh, Patrick, what do you reckon? Oh, again, that's another one where it's like a big R square. Like, if he gets it, that's good. But yeah, you're right that, that there is more room for stolen bases. I think obviously there's the new rules, but as much as runners understand it now more, also 
pitches, catches, and everyone else does. Uh, look, Thomas Haas, he probably would be very capable of it if he put his mind to it, but there are some times where, you know, he probably could steal and he won't. Um, so, yeah, could happen. Uh, if I was gun to my head, I'd probably say no, though. Interesting. Ryan, what are you saying? Uh, well, I mean, in the current climate, if you want, if he wants to steal 40, he probably can. So I agree. I think Pat's getting to that point. With the rules the way they are, if he wanted to, then he probably could. Does 30-year-old Trey Turner want to put himself at that much risk running around the bases? Or does he want to concentrate on hitting? Probably wants to stay not injured. Uh, so I would imagine he'll probably steal 30-ish and sort of just chill a bit. But I, oh. I could be wrong. He, he could just he could just go wild. Like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, I've, <laughs> I've gone 50. <laughs> Why not? You know, he, uh, I think the Phils need to try and manufacture. You know, one thing we struggled last year was manufacturing runs. The slow start was down to the power was gone and we couldn't get runs the other way. Stolen bases and speed on bases is going to be key. I think himself, Stott as well. I think Stott, stolen bases is going to rise right up. You've got Pat Jay and Rojas who are very, very quick on the bases, as we know. I, I think that Trey showed at the type back in last year, especially, that he can swipe bags of fun. I think we're going to see more of it. I think we're going to see a different trade to last year, a more confident Trey Turner, where all aspects of his game are going to get better, hopefully defensively as well. <laughs> I'm going for the big 50, mate. He hasn't stolen 50 in his entire career. Not till and now. <laughs> you're, you're an absolute beast. I love this. This is bad. It's, 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 it's a bold one. Hey, I'll take 40. I'll take 40. It's up this on last year. I, but I, think, I don't know. I I think I think I'm going. No, I'm sticking to it. We'll go you're 50. We'll, I, I tell you what, we'll, 50. We'll, it's 50. We'll, we'll we'll revisit these halfway through the season and then after the season. <laughs> and I'll, I'll remind you. You just know, said that. I yeah. know you said. <laughs> I know you said you were glass half full. I don't know what's in the glass. No. Oh, that's a good. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> it's just water, I promise. Uh, uh, Stu says maybe a hot take, but Trey Turner will go over and get MVP this season. There you go. Love that. We'll get to that very shortly. But I love that. That's uh, as I've seen that quite a bit. People are backing Trey for a, a big year and MVP year. All right, let's get to the man. Mr. MV3, Bryce Harper, 36.5. Harper home runs this season. Uh, everybody watching, Patrick, Ryan, Patrick first. What are you saying? 36.5 over or under, Bryce Harper. This one is more thing. Like, it could happen. And unlike the last ones, I think it's not just a bonus. Like, this one could actually, you know, is more realistic. That's a lot. That's a big ask. I mean, you're you're you pretty much have to assume he stays healthy all season for that. Even so, he's going to be rested a few times. He's going to be pulled or even injected. I imagine <laughs> once. So, like, I don't want to say no to everything. So I'll say yes. Asterisk. It's tough. It's tough. Um, but but yeah, it could happen. I mean, if he gets firing, you know. He's someone that can show, you know, do it more than once in a game. Someone that, that likes it when he's needed. Uh, as I said, now if we get to the postseason as well, that will add a few. Yeah. Go yes, on, on I think it's definitely possible. Good, good man. I, I, like He missed, what, half a season last year, came back early, took him a while to get going, and still, what, got 25 home runs last year? Extra 10 on that. Yeah. yeah. Ryan, what do you reckon? Yeah, he got 21 last year. Um, 21, he, uh, yeah, it's not bad, but <laughs> I actually, I actually think that I'll go over. Whoa, here we go. <laughs> because yeah, he's uh, all right. He's only gone over. He's only gone over 36 and a half uh, once actually, but that's surprising. He got 42, but he's been in and around 34, 35 a few times, like four, four times I think. Um, he gets hot when he gets hot. If he stays healthy, as Pat's saying, he can go on streaks as well it, it, with the binge of the home runs, multi-home run games. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll have 30, 39, 39 home runs. Love it. Love it. Yeah. The thing is, though, with, him, with the way he likes to play first base, him staying healthy all season is a very, you know, it is a big if. 
I mean, we all remember how what happened last season. Like, was it the second game after he came back? I think it was it against the yes, Guardians. Yes, when he fell, fell over the uh, tarpaulin and into the into the pit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like you know, Topper was probably saying, "Right, Bryce, ease into it. Don't do anything stupid." And yeah. so, but yeah, I think I think it's good to be optimistic. Like Bryce Harper is one of the players where you where you get out and you think, "Oh yeah, Bryce is on." You know, you're you're, you're doing your tweet, you look up at the TV. Oh, it's Bryce. You you want to see Bryce? He gets you excited. And yeah. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's, he is one of the the athletes you see and you think he's, you know, you think he's a bit superhuman. The way he feels, the way he bats, the way he always seems to come good in the big moments. Um, so, yeah, why not have a little bit of fun with him and think, yeah, maybe he can get 40 home runs. Maybe maybe he can go 50, as Oof. Matt's saying. Oof. Yeah, why? <laughs> Right, runs, but we are uh, we're talking with we're, we're challenging Braves territory right here. Jay Hall says a healthy Harper is an easy over. Uh Daniel Harry, 42 home runs. Uh, I'm I'm at the 40 mark, but again, there is an asterisk and if, if he stays healthy. And there, you're right, Patrick. There are gonna be times where we've got to be super careful with Bryce. He's got an injury record which isn't great. Rarely goes for a full season healthy. Again, it's the way he plays. He is the showman. He gives it everything, you know, even just just throwing the ball, as we saw in the outfield, you know, he was doing his elbow, you know, he he just gives it everything. I like him at first base, but even still, like you said, that Guardians game when he fell over the wall, you know, you're like, oh, Bryce, come on. You know, in a wince, his swing is so powerful. His body explodes with every, with every swing he does. You've got to be easy with Bryce. You got you know any injury niggle, you're gonna pull him straight away and just keep him safe. So he is gonna miss games this season, no doubt about it. However, I'm again glass half full, a special glass half full. I'm going over, I'm going, I'm around 40 as well. Uh Stu says Harper over 40 if you can stay healthy. Yeah, I, I don't see why not. I don't see why not. RBIs, you're talking over hundred as well. 40 home runs would likely accumulate to over hundred RBIs. And then you're talking probably MVP territory as well. Um, next one. Oh my word! This is this is super positive. I love this. Uh, right, where are we? Over and under on my boy Bone. Now, big year for Bone. I think this is a massive year for Bone. A little bit make or break. Great year last year with the RBIs. He has to kick on. Um, sustain the RBIs, a bit more power, be great defensively. He's come a long, long way. I think Bone will kick on, and I think Bone is going to, again, a bit like Bryson, take it to the next level. I think he's Bone needs to more than Bryson does. I think he's in a, a position there where if he doesn't kick on, it could be a position where they look at maybe moving on from Bone. I don't want to talk about it. Can't break up the daycare, but that that's the next season problem. But, but Bone's my boy. 22.5 RBIs over and under. I'm going over around 26, 27. Anything else would be fantastic. Ryan, what do you reckon? Um, I don't think they're they're gonna move on from him. I mean, any like I don't think that they're gonna even if he hits less home runs than that. I he's I don't think that the power is his calling card. It's not he doesn't have any power. He does have power. He could hit over, but even without doing that, he makes such good contact and, and hits quite well for average and puts the ball in play and he creates situations that get us RBIs. Um, and he's someone that I like to see coming up to the batter's box in big moments as well. I quite like, I quite, I feel quite good about him being able to put the ball in play. Um, I like him, but I'm still going to say under, just. I would, say, I would say he'll probably repeat around about like 20 home runs but i think that'll be enough for him to have a really good season and just contribute all around i, I like I, I think well, Bone yeah. he had I like a good habit lot. of coming through when it mattered last year like he was the mo one of the most clutch players especially when it mattered I don't like runner on base you could especially second or third you'd usually see Bohm getting him home patrick there's something about the way he like stands in the batter's box Go sorry on. to interrupt something about the way he sort of it's like the um I don't know, he's physically quite a big guy. And maybe it's just me. Like, when he sort of stands, he, he seems to sort of uh, have a presence in the batter's box to me. Like, and he had a bit of a calmness about the way he approaches it. I I just really like him. I, he, he's quite mature for his age, I think. But, um, 
maybe that's no, just I think you're, I think you're right. I think it's you're spot on, Ryan. I'm, I'm a big Bohm fan. I, I think Bohm has got potential to take it to the next level. I've got a bold prediction for Bohm coming up actually late, later, <laughs> later, later on. Uh, Patrick, what do you reckon? 22.5 home runs overall, the under. Uh, yeah, it's a tough ask. He might do it. That's one where I'm 50 50 on. Um, yeah, it's definitely possible. Uh, I'd say, um, if he gets swinging, why not? Why not? Um, I think with Bohm, with, with whether they move on from Bohm or not, yeah, I think he's a good asset. I think he's no more than a good asset, probably, you know. But do you want uh, can you get a team with nine generational players? No. Um, if the, if there's a replacement that's a clear improvement that's available on the market, then sure, go for it. Um, but Bohm is, you know, he provides stability. He performs well. Um, he's still only 27, you know, he's still got a good few years in him. I think, I think he does his job. I think that he's, um, for, he's someone that splits players, uh, splits the fan base a little bit because there are some people that really like him and uh, there are some people that get annoyed with that that maybe uh, a player is getting, you know, undue credit or whatever. But, uh, yeah, he's... Yeah, I think he does the job. Whether he gets 23 home runs, again, that's a tough one. It's a tough ask. I think that... I think the probability would be no, just because, like, you know, you'd say it's 50-50 uh, if he stays healthy, and then the chance that he does get injured, which could happen to anyone, would just tip it uh, on the no side. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's it's completely feasible that it does happen. Yeah, I, I, I agree. We've got uh, comments coming in. Uh, I'll get to a question shortly, which is actually quite an interesting question about who would be the first player be, that he's likely to be traded. Casty, I'll get to that shortly. That's a, that's a good point. Um, I think the, uh, Jay reckons a good leader in that clubhouse, Alec Baum. Um, he needs to live this season, says Daniel Harry. Stu says, I'll be happy with 20 home runs for Baum. Probably go under anywhere between 18 and 20. I'm fine. Uh, I'm fine with. Yeah, I I agree. I'm going to go over. I think Bohm's going to go slightly over as well, um, which would be again a bonus because I think around 2021 is 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 fine for Alec. Uh, 28. Blimey, that would be uh, 28 Bohm songs this season. We've got the voice vocal cords for that one. I love it. Absolutely love it. If it does that London, no, that will make London serious for me. If Bohm goes yard, and I get to belt out the Alec Bohm song at London Stadium. That <laughs> that's uh, that is going to be awesome. Okay, yeah, I I think we're about the same on that one. Um, okay, who will lead the the team in saves this season? Interesting, because we don't really have a bona fide closer. It's going to be by committee. Uh, so there could be a few options here. There may be an option that's not even at the Phillies yet. Who knows? Uh, Ryan, who do you think is going to lead the team in saves? Is he on the team right now or could he even be someone to come? No, I'm I'm pretty no. bullish on uh, Alvarado. Um, I think they'll... I, I don't see why they wouldn't let him have a go and, at the start. And I don't... And as long as... Again, it, it's a bit of a health uh, concern, I suppose. Sometimes, it, you know, he had a few weeks last year, but... I, yeah, I like him. I like the strikeout stuff. I think he'll be glad to have a full go at the gig if that's the way that they go with it. They might mix and match a little bit, I suppose. But I just think most of the time you would want the hard-throwing strikeout guy in that situation. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm really com I'm confident. I like it. When I think about it, when I think about him in the role... I can see him doing very, very well. There were times last season when it was just like filthy stuff, like really filthy. And that 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 looks like closer stuff to me. I like him. Yeah. And, and the good thing is, if it's not Jose, we've got a heart, a, you know, a, a fierce throwing Dominguez. Uh, Kirkering's going to come back and may have opportunities as well. You've got Soto as a backup just in case. The, the op we've got options. We've got actually options in that bullpen and probably two to three high leverage arms that could fill the job just as well if, if jose goes through a slump um we've got guys who can come in there and do the job so i i, I think it's between jose alvarado 
Possibly Kirkring. If they give Kirkring a chance and he delivers, I think they'll try and lean on that as well. I think it'd be good to have two out-and-out -out closers in Kirkring and Alvarado. Uh, Patrick, what do you reckon? Yeah, I'm a big fan of Alvarado. Uh, I think the question is whether he is that closer. I think what the point that Jay made in the comments is a good one, that they like putting him in the setup. But yeah, I still think I can see I can see it being Alvarado as well. You won't you won't find any dissent from me on that because I rate him a lot. Uh, of course, part of the save it's not just being put in that position; it's actually going ahead to complete the save. Uh, yeah, I like I like the shout of Alvarado as well. Yeah, and agreed. I know, especially if he hits the ground running out of right, if we put him in some early opportunities, delivers, I think then you'll see a confidence from him to go on. And it, yeah, there's going to be times when he blows saves. Every closer goes through it. But, uh, you know, Kimball did until he complete, his arm fell off. He did he did a great job. And he's a, he's a tough guy to replace. The regular season saves from Kimball, who was an all-star, <laughs> don't forget, last season. Crazy, I know. Um, but he he did the job for a large part of the season, Kimbrell, and it's it's a big role to fill. I agree. I think Alvarado, unless he really struggles early on, then they may try and push Kirkering or or even Sir Anthony. I think Sir Anthony is a good shout. Um, but again, it's 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 a nice dilemma to have. You know what? A, again, like the, the defense and what a contrast to having the worst bullpen. In history, what 2019 2020 to now MLB ranking us as the top elite bullpen, which makes me a little bit uneasy. It's like whew, pressure, guys. Whoa, um, yeah. but it wow, what a contrast and, and what a luxury of sorts to have as well. And Jay's right, Jay Hall puts by the end of the year, I'd love to see Sir Anthony in that role. You can see them moving Alvarado, <laughs> then moving Alvarado into the high leverage setup. Um, Daniel Harry, I mean, Matt, with, it's an area yeah, for concern. It's just a bit of a the con. I, I would have a higher concern with Serranti at the minute. Not that I think he's going to have a bad season. It's just he, he did struggle quite a lot at times. It, I know he came. He starts started the season a little not quite right. Ended up on the IL. Came back. Struggled with his control a bit. We know he's got the stuff. We know he's filthy. But at the same time, there were more. I saw more from Alvarado last season that suggests to me that he could step straight into a high leverage role uh, with it, than with Sir Anthony, where it felt like he was losing his command a little bit. And I, I was really a little bit yeah. concerned. I mean, he, he didn't end the season with good stats either. I, I, think, I think Sir Anthony needs a run, a run in the team, a run in the bullpen, because injuries have blighted this man's career so far. When yeah. he first burst on the scene, you were... You know, he was he was elite. He was incredible. Injuries have, have really knocked him back. And he started last season. Of course, he missed months just before that. He missed a lot of spring training as well going into last season. So he was really on the back foot before last season even started and, and never really found his place, never really got dialed in. And injuries struck again in a very disrupted season. I think from what I saw him in spring, he was more just trying to get himself back in a groove. And I think early part of this season, we may see a bit more of that from Sir Anthony. And I think we're going to put him in slightly lower leverage situations just to give him some runner games, just to give him some innings, his confidence back up. Because when he's when he's on it and when his confidence is, is high, Sir Anthony is a hell of a pitcher. He's unbelievable. And I think it'd be wise for us just to put him in some low, low leverage situations, give him the innings, and then – because he will build up. If he stays healthy – you know, what a pen. What a pen we're going to have with the four of Alvarado, Kirkering, Dominguez. Uh, and then what, Soto, if he can stay healthy, Soto's got that proneness of a bad inning. And when it all goes wrong, it goes wrong for Soto. Although his ERA, I just cannot work out how it was that high because every time I saw him, he was he was good. He had some good stuff. And he could be, you know, he could be a, a closer contender if needed at some points. Um, but I'm I'm hopeful if Sir Anthony stays fit, stays healthy, I'm confident we're gonna get the Sir Anthony that we saw a couple of years ago when yeah. he first came first came on the scene. Right, who will hit the most home runs? It's between are we saying between Schwarber and Bryce Patrick? Yeah. Uh I've I forgot about Kirkrin for the last question. But anyway, uh yeah, most home runs. 
Uh, yeah, between Schwarber and Harper, I think with Schwarber now, his his thing is really known. He hits home runs. People will not pitch to him. He will draw a lot of walks. Um, but, I mean, even with that said, you know, he does hit home runs. And with my with my big question mark about whether Harper will stay healthy, I'm going to say flip a coin. The Schwarber side has a has a higher weight. How many uh, do you reckon, mate? How many do I think? Uh, a lot. Uh, I'll, I'll, put it, I'll, I'll put it in the. I'll put it in. The, how many did I say for Harper? Thirty six. I'll, I'll put it in the mid forties. I'll put it in the mid forties. Forty. Uh, Forty seven. There we go. Forty seven Schwarz bombs. Yes. Yes. Uh, Ooh, we will revisit that. <laughs> we'll revisit that. I would love it. I'll tell you what. In the regular you know, season. I, if you've got Schwarber hitting 47, Harper hitting 38, and, and the rest of them, the, the offense season. being what we know they can be, damn, damn, what a year ahead. Uh, Ryan, what do you reckon? Yeah, like 41 or something. Let's go. Like, yeah, Why not? Schwarber. <laughs> the, the answer the answer, is Schwarber. <laughs> like, it's just uh, it's what he's doing. Like, like Patrick was saying, it's literally the whole approach is either take a walk and get on base. And if I don't do that, I'll just hit it over the fence. <laughs> so, and I love it. I love it. Yeah. It's like, who cares about batting average? Like, batting average was so, like, it, it's not even relevant. Either get on base or all, smash all, the ball over the fence. All stats for Schwarber, except home runs and walks, are irrelevant because... <laughs> Because it, it, it's, it's what he is. It, it's what he is. He's the DH, and that that's what he does. You know, it, all I care about is the home runs. For, for and he needs to get at least over thirty five, at least. Um, I, I'm we yeah. and I know people have been concerned about Schwarber's average in in spring training. I, I wouldn't. I mean, the other stat that's important is on base percentage, and and let's just like Patrick was saying, a lot of. They won't pitch to him a lot of it. He walked 126 times last season. I mean, you could, if he singled 126 times instead, then he would have a good batting average. Yeah. Well, he, if he singles, he's on first base. If he walks, he's on first base. That's no a good real point. Difference. It, That's a good point. A good way of looking at it. I think for him, the only difference is if you single, you might drive in a run, but he's leading off. So often. He's not going to drive in a run with a single anyway. So he's literally doing the same thing. I think with home runs as well, he'll need to hit some because you're right. Uh, to ju that will justify the average as well because it will it will put your OPS you know through the roof. Yeah, he had a, a pretty low average, but uh, one nine seven last season. His OPS plus was still one hundred and twenty two, and that's his lowest for a long time. So you know. Uh, hitting long balls completely justifies it you know it's if it's worth a quarter of a if it's worth four times a single then you would need to to hit a home run about a quarter of the time everyone else hits a single so for me yeah he needs to he we you know we need his home runs if he's not getting the home runs then he doesn't really justify his place in the team but he's been getting home runs for a long time now and i don't see that changing I'm also taking the over on Schwarber 0 0.5 steals. <laughs> he can do it. We saw um, it in 2022. Yeah. Uh, he, he, he can steal. Yeah. He didn't do much last year. but I'm, ta I'm taking the over. I, I think he'll steal three bases this season. Ooh. Ooh, you I heard like it, it here first. I, I like it. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll take... Do you know what? I'll take the over on now. I'll go, I'll go five. Let's yeah. go five. <laughs> and he, and take it, Patrick. Over, <laughs> under, five. Five. Uh, 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 this, this show's gone wild anyway, so I mean if it's over on, under five, it's I will I will I will put, put a lot of money on under. Uh I don't, <laughs> I, don't I don't see why he would steal bases five times unless there's some sort of you know, maybe come on, steal what, Kyle, steal. We I'll want go to five see stolen it. bases and at one point this season Rojas and Schwab will double steal at some point. Because no doubt, okay. Rojas, yeah. okay put a hundred yeah. quid that that doesn't happen if you're confident. You know, he had he had, he had ten steals in twenty in twenty twenty two. He had ten steals, mm. and it's way easier to steal bases now. So if you want, if he wants to steal a base, let's, get, off, him off him let's get him moving. Yes, love it. Off he goes. Go on, Kyle. Straight up. How many last season? 
Uh, <laughs> Matt, uh, Matt says, 40, uh, Daniel Harris says, 49 shore bombs. Amy Barron says, 44. Uh, Stu says, over 45. Yeah, we're in the 40s with, with Kyle. 40s will do. Anything over 40 would be fantastic. And, and, a, and a bonus, really. Um, and he did get as everyone a free tackle in the World Series. Yeah. That is, that that is true. true eh? That is true. <laughs> Not that we benefited from it, but yeah. It didn't work in Taco Bell over here, I'll tell you that. Walked into my Taco Bell. <laughs> free taco, Kyle Schwarber. Hey, get out. <laughs> um, next one. Season. Philly's gold glove. Right. There's a few contenders for this one. There's a, there's a few contenders for this one. Ryan? Do you know what? Because I'm such a fantasy guy, I barely even think about gold gloves. Um, so last year, Wheeler was like the first pitcher in 42 years on the Phillies to get a gold glove is what I was reading. That's incredible. Um, so Real Muto's had two in the last few. And there are, yeah, why can't Real Muto just do it again? Yeah, Real Muto. Real, JT, JT for Ryan. Patrick, what do you reckon, buddy? <laughs> I really want it to be Harper. So I'm gonna say ah, oh, but like that would just be cool, wouldn't it? More than anything, you just you just sort of you, you have people playing first base for years, and he's just sort of waltzed in there and become better than all of them. So uh, from you know this completely selfish view, this isn't a prediction really. This is a hope, uh, Bryce Harper. Do you want my my bold prediction? My yeah. out the box, complete wild bold prediction. Carl Schwarber. Absolutely not. <laughs> Alec Bohm will be in contention. The man. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, he's like a leaping salmon at third base. He's sucking up everything that comes his way. I, I tell you what, Dark Horse, an outside bet, complete outsider, maybe 100 to 1, but at least in contention, Alec Bohm. But, being serious, Bryson Stott. This is like that moment on The Masked Singer where one of them goes... I think that <laughs> I know it done. is Elton John. And you're like, nah, mate. Like, no, Elton John ain't going on the mass singer. <laughs> I, I, I think it's I think it's the president of the United States. Like <laughs> Chopper's more likely to become president than win a gold club, isn't he? Some of the hang, hang, oh, hang on, hang on, look, hang on, hang on. Look, I all right, contend. I think Bone could put himself in a contender. I think Bryson Stott, who was overlooked massively last season, uh, again, a big, big step up for Bryson Stott. I think he he can be a contender. JT can be a contender. Not just for Phillies, but for, for MLB, Gold Glove, Bryce Harper. Rojas gets a run of games. Why why not? You know, he, he definitely has it in his locker. Um, but Alec Bone, contender. But Bryson Stott, for me, I think Stott's going to win a gold glove this year what, what in, in MLB. Will, what do you think will happen in terms of the way that Rojas's playing time is going to go down? Like, how how, how much is he going to play? And, and what what are they going to do with Merrifield? Well, well, again, what a, what a nice dilemma to have for once, isn't it? You know, from a, a positions where we were struggling horribly, just even the start of last season, to coming into now where we've got Rojas, Pache, Marsh out there, Merrifield. I, I think he's going to go. I think Top is going to go a lot on on matchups, isn't he? Left, left, and right-handed matchups. Uh, Rojas just has to get on base. Just we're saying Schwarber just has to hit home runs. Rojas just get on base, bunt, bunch your way there. Contact, you know, he can run out those ground outs and turn them into singles. And then once he's on base, he can steal for fun. He can make things happen. He can then, from first base, get home on just a single if it's a long single. Um, I'm confident about Rojas. His defense is unbelievable. Pache is looking like the player in spring. I know spring relatively doesn't mean a lot. But he's looking like the Pache he was before he got injured last season. And Pache, before he got injured last season, was showing glimpses of the player that everybody thought he could be when he was a prospect. You know, this is a highly, highly rated prospect who just has been blighted by injuries so far. And I think if he can stay healthy and really get back to where his potential could be, I think we are... What, what a sport for choice. And Merrifield is just a perfect utility guy. He can start... I think he's going to play a lot, but in different positions... And again, I know his splits are massively 
contrast from the start of the season to the end of the season. That injury knocked him off his stride. His stats pre-injury were fantastic. One of the best hitters in baseball, contact hitters in baseball. The injury was tough on him. He was he, he struggled to get back from it, and he, he struggled to get back into the to the flow, like Pat J to a certain extent when he came back from his injury. In spring so far, Pat J and Merrifield have looked like the players that we're hoping they can really, really be. And I'm ex- I'm really, I think R- M- Whit Merrifield is a real under the radar, shrewd, excellent signing for the Phillies, who I'm really excited about. I think in big situations, Merrifield is a guy who you definitely want a base. I think he'll pinch it a lot in big situations. I think Merrifield will cover in the infield like he can. If Stott needs a rest, turn needs a rest, boom. He will, he will go on matchups in the outfield. I think Whit Merrifield is a massive piece to the Phillies and massively underrated outside of Philadelphia and the rest of baseball. And I think Rojas and, and Pache will be a lot of defensive cover late in games and will probably platoon in centre field. But what a what what a sport for choice we are with options with these guys. And it's a great, great <laughs> dilemma to have. No, I mean, I, I think it, it's a good signing. I'm looking forward to that. I also think having some experience there, it, that there could be times when I mean, you've got, got to remember Rojas's age and his <laughs> relative lack of MLB experience. And yeah. then we saw at the back end of last season that sometimes in the batter's box, he strikes out a lot. He strikes out a lot and he doesn't walk much, which is fine for a bit. But over, again, 162 games... If you were playing every day, that can get you into a funk and it can become quite difficult, especially as a young player. So I think he may have moments in the season where it's going to be very nice to have some other more experienced players that can just spell him a little bit. Yeah, and the good thing is we have got players in backup. You know, we don't have to rush Rojas, you know, if he does struggle and does even have to go down and take some bats in AAA. Well, like you said, he's young. And what a, what a great thing. You know, he's still really young. Let him have the bats if he's been in AAA. Let him get his confidence back up. I he's think... so exciting, though. Like, well, and, oh. defen- and defensively, like, it's exciting to watch him defensively yeah. as well. So, like, you, you want him there. You, you hope that his bat is good enough already to just stay around, really. <laughs> yeah, and, and the fact that Top has kept him there, he's seen enough to, to, to have confidence. It, it's, it's great confidence for, for, for Rojas that, that Topper has kept him in there. To, to start to start the season with him you know that what for the young lad that's great you know that's that's great for him uh so it's a it's a big big boost but yeah he's young let, let, and i think let's not put too much pressure on him i know a lot of fans are saying i, I don't like the fans who are saying he's a bust already i don't like that and oh he's not Who, good who's enough. a bust rojas people people are already saying oh rojas is not good enough shouldn't be there well let's just he's so young let's not put the pressure on him you know let, yeah, let him let him come up in his own time. I, I think I we know I consume baseball slightly differently to some people. That we'll watch it differently, but I I know what I'm expecting before I watch him. I can see in his stats that he strikes out a lot and he doesn't walk much. So he, that's the player that he is. You can you can't like if if you're sitting down to watch a baseball player that you know is great defensively. Yeah. Once he gets on base, is an absolute nightmare. We'll steal bases, we'll cause havoc on the base pads and brings energy. But you have to understand that you're watching a player. He, he's never going to hit like, uh, <laughs> he's not going to hit like Mike Trout. It's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Um, right, let's get to the big ones. And guys, there's what, 284 of you watching on, on X right now. There's a lot of you watching on YouTube. Let's have it. Let's have your prediction on this next one. The Phillies wins the big one. Let's let's have it, guys. Where, where are you all right now? I know we're on the eve of opening day for the Phillies. I know we're excited. Two big predictions coming up. We're going to start with this one. The Phillies wins. Where are you guys? Get it in the comments there on the side. Daniel Harry straight in. 95. I think that's going to be quite a popular answer. Patrick, where are you, buddy? Where are you with these wins? 162. Boom. Right. Show um, the mic drop. Where, where uh, no, it's, well, it's, it's, it's so hard, isn't it? I mean, 90 last season, that was, uh, that was, that was good. I'd take 90 again. I mean, like it's, it's, there's so many unpredictabilities. I mean, 
uh, in, even the worst team in baseball history, the uh, the Cleveland Spiders, I still think won like 40 games in this season. Um, and and even the best teams, you know, have, have failed uh, and have lost a number of games. It's so hard to predict this accurately, but I think that 90 ballpark is pretty good. Looking at the roster, it's still a bit behind a few of the other teams, um, but it's still good enough to make the postseason again without too much worry. Um, so, yeah, I put it in that uh, ballpark. Like it, Ryan? Yeah, like, do you know what? I said last season, I enjoy having less wins than the Braves and then beating them in the playoffs. Like, we, we just keep <laughs> doing that. It's, yeah. it's actually more enjoyable than beating them in the division because it's pissing them off so much. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. So I, I'm like, uh, okay, fine. Um Maybe a, maybe a few more. I, I real, do you know a player we haven't discussed tonight who I really like that's giving me confidence that we could win more than 90 is Christopher Sanchez um, because I think he's really, really good. <laughs> like, he's really, no, you, 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 exactly. Right. If he has a season he had last year and even improves on that, what a front, yeah. what a what a four we have in the rotation. It looks like a four, and that's it. And then obviously you're relying on the I mean the fifth to help, but you can always trade later in the season. You like can and, you and, and what we get out of Walker, I think anything out yeah. of Walker good will be a bonus, to be honest. My answer's ninety four. Ninety four. I I'm at I'd probably say ninety five. Like we got ninety last year with that terrible start we had. This team is already going into this season far healthier and better equipped than they were last year. I think we'll get those up to five wins. I think we will. I, I'm going 96. I'm going 96 wins. Do we challenge the Braves? Well, as we said earlier in the show, the soft start to the season is a real opportunity to get six, seven, eight games above 500 and probably go toe to toe with the Braves to start the season with. And then let's just see what that does and what that turns into. If the Braves can get, if they get an early fight with the Braves and keep up early on, because the Braves ran off last year early doors, they had it wrapped up by by bloody June. If the Fields can keep track with the, the Braves going to the trade deadline, I think we'll go toe to toe with the Braves. I think the Fields, there's a real, there's a real at the rivalry between us and the Braves is it is up there. You know, I, I hate the Braves I, as much as the Mets sometimes. That they're right on par with them. And for us to have a real ding dong, toe to toe, glove to glove fight with the Braves all year long, flip flopping between top spot all season, I'd love that. And I think if the Phils start hot, which they could with a good schedule in, in, in April and then fairly decent in May, I think the Phils are going to really take it to the Braves and that will accelerate some wins up to possibly plus 96. 97 and Stu in the chat saying 100 wins. That would be amazing. They do, they do have a few questions themselves. I mean, I don't want to turn it into a Braves problem, but I don't think that Morton, Reynaldo Lopez, or even Chris Sale is an absolute guarantee. Like, you take Chris Sale, who could be great for 70, 80 innings, but then yeah. his arm could fall off. I mean, there is there really is no... The bottom half of their rotation for the first time in a while might not be as strong as it has been over the last few years. So so maybe this will be a closer race. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Stu says in the comments there, if the Phillies can keep in the division race by end of June, we can get 95 plus wins. I'm with, I'm with you there, Stu. I think the competitive edge will really, really come out then because we'll have that target of them. If we're within range or even ahead of the Braves, we've got that incentive to really, really push on. Trade deadline would be really spicy. I think us and the Braves would just empty and try and get try and get which is why i like the fact that we're sort of running it back to start the season we haven't really spent the big money because i think the trade deadline is going to be far more important than what we have right now and although montgomery went for a good deal uh in the end to the d-backs i like what we're doing i like just keep I, I think the question of the division when obviously it is a five team division not a two team division uh, but the other three teams just look so they just look so deficient. I mean, you say you hate the Braves more than the Mets, or as much as, as the Mets. It, it's up there. Um, right now, I don't, the Mets are sort of an irritant more than anything. I don't really think of them much. They, they're sort of irrelevant to us, to be quite honest. I mean, <laughs> true, it's, fun, true. it's fun to beat them, 
but it's it's like sort of beating your your eight year old cousin at, at Mario or something, you know. Like, well done. It's you don't you wouldn't want to lose to him, but you know, you, it's one of those. And yeah, the nationals are terrible, and I don't. The Marlins are always, you know, they're they're a question mark. I don't think they're going to. They've always got our number, except in the wild card last year, of course. Yeah. They're going to challenge us, and the, they're not going to challenge us really in the regular season. I do um, not want to be. Listen, Patrick, you you are going to be a meme in Mets culture. If if the Mets somehow pull it together and finish above us this season, you are cooked. You all are cooked. publicity <laughs> is good publicity. See, see, that's what I was setting myself up to there. So then I become yeah. a meme. Oh wow! Yeah. You know, everyone laughed at me, but everyone's clicking on it. I'm bringing I'm bringing eyebrow, eyeballs to the uh, the. Uh, Broad streets of Britain. <laughs> all <laughs> news is good news. All, all good news is good it's, news. It's uh, yeah, that's the Mets, uh, especially if they beat us in London. We can't, we cannot, yeah. cannot have that. At I all. mean, that could happen to be honest, just because it's two games. You know, anything can happen on in one or two games. Um, but but I think over 162 games, the the difference in quality between the two teams will really show. Uh, and the Mets are a bit of a circus in general at the moment. The two New York teams are sort of trying to outdo each other for being embarrassing, uh, yeah, which is always love fun. Love to see it. <laughs> I mean, I'm enjoying that circus. All right, the big one, the big one, World Series winners. Uh, I, I, it's now. The time is now. Like we have to. Have that chip on our shoulder of the last two years of of pure hurt and disappointment. Like 2022, I still can't watch that Alvarez home run. I still can't watch that game against the Astros. It still hurts. I'm still not over it. The D backs, it was kind of inexcusable what happened. Should never, never have lost that. We should have been in the World Series. This year has to be the year for me. Uh, I think this is slightly probably make or break this is our windows now we've had two cracks at it we really should have won one of those two that have just been this year third time lucky that feels it's there i think it's there i <laughs> you just got to learn from my mistakes if we just had one good inning against the d-backs in those final two games we would have been in the world series i hope and pray they have learned from those horrible complacency they got into against the D-backs and that's what it was. They got complacent. They've got to go in this season with a chip on their shoulder and so far from what I've seen from all the sound bites and the players, from Topper, from David Womery, everybody, Dave Dombrowski, sorry, everybody is saying, on oh, single the same hymn sheet. It's business time. We're running it back. It's no nonsense. We're not messing around. We're running it back with the same team. We're going to go one better. Whit Merrifield's comments were fantastic. Strom's, you know, even the daycare seem like they're like, yeah, you know what? No messing around. This is it. Business time. The Phils are winning the World Series. Ryan? <laughs> You're asking. Yeah, I don't know. I, Yeah, I think it will be the Phillies and the Dodgers in the, uh, uh, the like championship series. And I think yes, the, yeah. yeah, I think the I like the uh, Orioles to to do well in the American League, and I have a bit of a soft spot. So I, I keep saying if it's going to be like Baltimore versus Philly in the World Series, I would really quite enjoy that. To be honest, I think that would be great. So that is the dream World Series, mate. I, and I tell you what, if if it wasn't to be us, then it's only Orioles to be any other any other. Oh, you have a soft spot for them as well, do you? Yeah. Well, obviously, everybody does. Everybody who I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing is, if we play them in the World Series, I want to crush them, so then I won't have a soft spot for them anymore. Yeah, so. <laughs> that, that. But yeah, I, I, I think, I think, the Orioles, I think, I don't know how you can't have anything against the Orioles. Orioles are one of those teams, like plucky little underdog teams, who have already got off to a lightning start tonight. Patrick, are the Phillies winning the World Series? Uh, no. Uh... I mean, look, it's a prediction show. There's there's 30 teams, in a, and I know, you know, some of them are terrible. If, if you're going to make a prediction, do the Phillies win or do one of the 29 other teams win? Then, of course, you're going to say probably one of the 29 other teams. I mean, the, the margin forever of error You're is taking so the field, Patrick. That, that's yeah, what I was yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, I mean, the, it's, it's for these, yes, no, but um, like the margin of error in the playoffs is so small. Even if we play beyond our wildest dreams, well, you know, 
we could just do what we did against the D-backs and fall asleep and sleepwalk our way can't uh, happen again. to the TV screen. Happen again. I mean, you said you said the Phillies, um, Phillies Orioles was the Dream World Series. I, I think the real Dream World Series is the Phillies and the uh, A's. Um, that'd be the perfect World Series, and then I'd be confident. But yeah, I mean, so many good teams. Only one of them has to beat us in the playoffs for it to go over. It's so, so hard to win the World Series. But the thing is, it's not whether it's probable, it's whether it's possible. And the answer to that question is a resounding yes, of course it's possible. Uh, we have the quality to get to the uh, playoffs, no doubt. I think it would be a huge disappointment. It's not, it's not a hope we get the playoffs, it's an expectation. And then, you know get past the wild card which i think is a toss-up no reason we can't do that you're you're three games away from from winning it all so it's it's definitely a possibility it's a real possibility it's not just a, a hope or a dream um and it's something they have to be judged on it's not going to be like 22 when it's all oh, they've come so far you know well done unlucky they didn't get there last season you saw more what the consequences are if you do lose um i really hope that it happens of course it will be very very tough there are just so many good teams out there uh and obviously you know if we knew the answer we wouldn't bother watch a 162 game season uh we'll find we'll all find out together i suppose last year actually pissed me off though like i was at i was yeah, actually yeah. like annoyed like they, they should have after beating the braves they they should have won the World Series. Really. I can't. I can't talk. They, I hate. They I shouldn't hate. have just got there. They should have won it. Like they, I think they were probably the best team left. And Texas they, 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 were good. I know were. Texas were good, but the Bra that series with the Braves should have really decided the winner of the World Series. I just, I can't um, believe what actually happened. To be honest, I know I don't want to turn it into that, but no, please, I can't go hard, back there. Right, then I, I can't go like, back there. I can't. I want to go again. But the thing is, I want. I don't know how the players would feel. I want to go again and get invested, but. At the same time, I think there should be a calm professionalism about it. Like, not everything needs to be... Sometimes with the Phillies, it's felt a bit like everything's high energy. Like, Harper hits a home run and the, everything's like, all the time. Well, <laughs> I think to get to the end, you know, it's a bit like in any sport. To actually get to the end and cross the finish line in first place, you don't need to be celebrating every single moment of exuberance, like over the top all the time. Like you just need to do it. Like, I'm not saying don't have fun, but you just need to, you've got to reserve the energy and, and you've got to go at a pace that makes sense and, and just do the job. And Enjoy it. Enjoy it by being disciplined, as Neil Warnock would say. <laughs> but, but, um, it, it's an interesting yeah, point. Was, celebrating. Although part of me thinks that maybe in Game 7 and Game 6 against the D-backs, that maybe they forgot the, uh, the gravity of the situation yeah. and they sort of thought they already had one foot in the World Series. So maybe a reminder that, yes... This is really important. It's not, it is, you know, it's a game of baseball. It's a sport. There are much more important things in life. But this is, in terms of the season, the be all and end all, you know, when when things go down, you need to be there. You need to do it. Um, and maybe a reminder, because as I said, it wasn't like this hilarious comedy of errors that Cos does. It was sleepwalking. We just didn't show up. Uh, and yeah, I hope that... Um, I hope that, that they do take it with a bit more professionalism. I, I think that the vibe around the team has always been this, oh, you know, it's like these fun group of lads who, who are playing baseball, who, you know, have dreamed to reach the top and well done to them. But actually, believe that, there are some really elite, really good baseball players that should be challenging again. Um, and they're going to be judged if they don't make it. They're going to be, of course, judged if they do. Um and hopefully, you know, the mental side is very important, especially in a sport like baseball. Uh, there's nothing really we can do sitting here in, in England, but uh, let's just hope it goes well for them. And obviously, uh, we'll try to give them that boost when they come here as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Stu says it's World Series or bust for us. I think it will uh, happen with the Phil's. Over Baltimore in six. Amy Barron says, we are lucky to have this group remain relatively the same as a group I want it so badly from. Yep, I agree. Let's let's finish it. On. <laughs> I think that's a wrap. We'll finish it on there. Uh, 
Wow, 311 you watching on, on Twitter, uh, or NX, whatever it is now, several of you on YouTube. Wow, guys, thank you so much for watching and getting involved in uh, in the comments as well. I cannot wait. Bring on bring on tomorrow night. I'm going to go and watch some baseball now and uh, get my fix for now. Um, Stu reckons the D-back is going to have an underrated year this year, in my opinion. I, I, think, they're, I think they're sneaky good. I think they'll be probably wildcard contenders again and see how far they go. But Ryan, Patrick, thank you so much for joining me, guys. Hopefully we'll be rendezvousing next week after beating the Braves, sweeping them out of town, sweeping the Reds out of town. The Phil start on beating as I head out there. Let's go. Guys, thank you for watching on YouTube and X. Please uh, follow us across the socials. There's a lot of competitions coming up in the next couple of days. Vlogs coming up for my trip in Philly and in DC coming up. Uh, there's a lot coming up. There's a lot of good content coming, a lot more live shows coming. Thank you for watching, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.